Hey, how are you doing today? So this week is gonna be a little different from some of my other lessons on soundproofing. I had the opportunity to hang out with one of my new friends here in town, Duncan Ferguson, who is a professional mastering engineer at the Voltage Exchange, and got to visit his studio. And we actually did an impromptu tour of his studio talking about the acoustic treatment he used in his design to create a professional flat frequency response in his mastering room. This is going to be a studio tour, so I haven't done too many of these. I hope to do more in the future, giving you kind of the Andrew Masters style of studio tour, but for acoustic treatment and soundproofing, not for all the gear talk, which you can get plenty of elsewhere on the internet. Before we jump in, I do want to say I have a helpful resource for you. This is my free acoustic treatment guide, and this will give you everything you need to know to set up your home recording studio like a professional. And these are the tips that I've been using for years. It's how I get great recordings. Uh, my music has been placed on ABC, Netflix, uh, and it's also been used on HBO Max. So the acoustics I'm getting in my room are of the highest quality, and I just want to help you guys out as well. So to download that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic, and you can download that free acoustic guide right away. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to acoustically treat a professional mastering studio. Tell me about how you built this studio and sort of the, the acoustics behind it. Well, uh, it sort of was a grand experiment of, uh, I smarted the room empty and I figured out what were my trouble spots were gonna be with a, with a measurement microphone and a piece of software. And then sort of just started filling in those gaps where we were going. So um, the cloud itself is uh, two inch thick rock wall. Maybe a little, uh, there might be some different layers in there as well. Um, I put diffusers right above the desk of try to avoid as much reflections off the desk as I could, direct reflections, sort of fuse that out. There's a 2D diffusers right on the front, and uh, they sort of really help the speaker image a lot. They sort of just kind of help enhance that a bit. Um, there's uh, four and eight inch thick Owens Corning. I think it's, it's either 703 or 705 um, behind uh, each one of the speakers. And then there's actually a little soffit behind those speakers as well. So when we get the speakers up and running, you can actually hear that there's actually no low end bouncing back off of the, <laughs> I'm not, it's sound not soundproof. It's not soundproof. <laughs> uh, I actually did that as a budget thing. Cause I don't actually track in here. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't actually, for me, soundproofing doesn't matter. I just had to get the room to be right. at a certain, as flat as possible, certain flat as possible. So yeah. that was my, my compromise with my own self. <laughs> yeah. Cause of soundproofing course. is expensive. It's insanely expensive. Yeah, yeah so. totally. As we all know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so behind each one of these speakers, there's that four to eight inch thick Owens Corning in different spots. And then um, there is um, an actual soffit, like an actual just open airspace. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we walk behind the speakers and we get those up and running, I don't have any low end firing back into the room. That's awesome. So from, from the big speakers. And actually, these speakers are actually, for the size of the space that it is, these speakers are actually probably slightly too large. So I really mm -hmm. wanted to sort of mitigate yeah mitigate that but i've been on them for a long time and i didn't, didn't want to switch so <laughs> yeah totally that makes sense um behind this sort of 45 here yeah um there's uh just f sort of freestanding uh owens corning four and eight inches different mm -hmm. places behind that 45 is a triangular soffit got you that's then um the low end can blow through that owens corning and then mm -hmm. not bounce back got, so you it's, built a little bass trap yeah, thing in base, there basically yeah. full full like a full yeah. soffit bass yeah. trap yeah and because there's a uh, because these speakers are so large yeah and uh so there's no low end coming back off, yeah back, super smart being blown back super the smart room. yeah these back corners are also the four inch to eight inches thick so there's bass trapping here and then the rest of the room is sort of two to two inches to different to one inch thick um owens corning along with a little bit of rock roll as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. um i decided i'd made a decision to not do blow through fabric um and a lot of acousticians may like really yell at me like crazy but i was right. more going for a designer side of things i found mm -hmm. that like the blow through they didn't have really great designs with the blow through, blow yeah. through fabric and I was wanted to do a lot of attended sessions, mm -hmm. and so I kind of yeah, made it looks that, cool in here. I made that decision, and with all the measurement stuff, I'm actually 
I think blow through matters. I've heard the difference through all mm-hmm. that, but with sort of some of the adjustments that I've made, I was actually able to make it not have a giant impact right. on, on right. what I'm working through. And I'm actually really happy with the sound of the room. So Yeah, that's all um, that matters in the end. So I sort of sort of like a lot of compromises and figuring it out. And then also it's a grand experience. This room was the first room that I've built. So oh one thing that was really cool that I do think actually makes a difference um, in the clarity of some of the, the speaker energy is I sort of did what what I'm calling the poor man's Bob Ludwig, where uh, the speakers are actually sitting on the foundation of the garage here. Oh, yeah, um, totally. And uh, then we have a floated floor uh, uh, in the listening plane. Awesome. So um, just the, that's incredible to, just, that, yeah. to think about. And it actually helped get the speakers because it's a step. The floated floor is a step up. It helped get the speaker tweeters actually at ear height as I'm sitting sitting at the desk. Right, which is super important. And then what about the uh, diffusion on the back wall? So this is just a quadratic diffusion. Um, It's in a pattern uh, that's actually a nice pattern to look at as opposed to a random pattern like the ones on the ceiling. Okay, gotcha. Um, And uh, really, it's just taking care of like 4K to, I believe, 700 or or. A, a little bit below 700 so it's kind yeah. of taking care of all of that like sort of flutter tone energy mm-hmm. that could exist in the room we do have a bit of drywall right above them so it's actually really sort of mitigating that uh, aside from the cloud right um so uh, uh that's it's really just that bandwidth of the yeah. room is sort of ta- just calming the room down in, in that bandwidth. And did you so. build the diffusion yourself? I, I actually had a friend here in East Nashville build them and because um, I'm not a carpenter. Yeah, I, it my, is kind of hard. My, I've always thought that's I, like a really tricky thing to do. I built these myself first yeah. up top and I realized how they looked and I was like, oh shoot, then I painted them to match yeah. the room and I'm like, ah, my, my buddy can do these a lot a lot more efficiently. He had all the tools and everything. So we yeah. had them, I had them built um, and um, they're about 150 pounds each. Yeah. <laughs> And so we had to re- do some reinforcement to get them to f- to fit. And I I remember when I bought them, I threw them in a truck, and I I, was, I had to like muscle them in myself. It was yeah. really, it was quite a comedy uh, trying to get them in the room. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So. And then for uh, heating and cooling, you've got a mini split. I, can I see. have a mini split. This one, um, this is actually um, this is actually a fun point. Um, I'm actually switching over to a much quieter mini split. This was just sort of a budget mini split, and gotcha. it's actually fairly loud. Uh-huh. And um, I only use it when I have to, just yeah. during the winter or the summer. And actually, the room with as much of the Owens corning. I was going to say it feels on, great in here. With much of the Owens corning that I have going on, the room. Once I get the room to a certain temperature, mm-hmm. I can kind of get it stable, and yeah. I actually don't have to use it all that much. Yeah. Um, but the tube stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Does heat up the room very wonderfully in the winter. Yes, it, it sure keeps, does. It keeps it perfect in the winter. Yeah. In the summer, it gets a little hot in here, so yeah. I, yeah. I end up having to flip the mini split on. We're actually going to switch over to like a completely silent mini split here nice. really quickly, and we're going to do some duct work for the other room. Which uh, mini split are you thinking of using? Um, I believe. Uh, oh shoot, I had a quote on it. It's either the, is it the Dakin? Dakin? Yeah, Dakin. There's a, there's makes a, Dakin, some good there's ones. a really silent Dakin one, and there's another silent Mitsubishi one as well. Yeah, cool. Um, so it's either one or the other. So nice. We've gotten quotes on both. Um, and you you don't have any like ventilation system in here, but that's not a problem for you. That hasn't been an issue. No, I don't really have. Um, no, we kept it sealed. I try to keep the room as sealed mm-hmm. as it could. That might yeah. have been an oversight. Again, this was a beta experience. Hey man, you know I yeah. lived with a with no ventilation in my studio for yeah. a year. It didn't. It didn't kill me by any means. Um, but I eventually put one in just because, like, the CO two thing was like on my mind constantly. It was sure. this buildup of CO two. But you know, if you're just one person in this room, we have. I'm sure um, it's fine. Uh, again, it's up to code. So I have a smoke detector and a CO two detector in here. Or the like carbon monoxide. Or yeah. Carbon monoxide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess. Well, yeah. So that's different. Right? Yeah. The CO two is just like yeah. from us exhaling. Okay. It can build up in the room, but it's it. Like I said, it's it's not the end of the world. Okay. Carbon that's... monoxide would kill you very quickly, but that's not going to be an issue either in here. <laughs> well, actually, let's chat more about that. I'd yeah, yeah. I can tell you that. more about I, it. I, 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 that was never a thought of. I wonder, if, does, do people think about? I, is that a I, big thing? I, I tell people about it, but it's often overlooked because okay. it's something that you just don't think about. Uh, yeah, um, I've never had anybody mention yeah, that, so that's yeah. actually really great. It's another yeah. another thing. If you build an airtight room, technically you want fresh air exchange just because it is airtight. Sure. Um, but yeah. Okay. Well, awesome, man. This is. Is there anything else that I didn't talk about yet? But I think that's the main idea with the design. And you didn't. You so you have this. This is built in a garage. Yeah. Um, and then you built these 
like basically is it like a two by four frame or a one by two frame is uh, it a smaller frame one by whatever uh the the smaller stud yeah size smaller stud that's size. recommended for recording studios yeah um, and it's uh it's kind of a room within a room right um and so and the room if you can't really pro the video might be hard to show but the room actually is slightly trapezoidal yeah i can tell like yeah about a like a five a little less than five degree incline inward yeah. to to the front of that um and uh the again like the everything sort of floated the floor is floated and then the only thing that the garage so, so the garage foundation is the, is the speakers sit on the actual smoke okay cool of the garage foundation awesome so um yeah and actually i think that has made an impact i've heard, I've, I've spent time with these speakers in other rooms um and um it definitely feels feels like it cleaned up some small small yeah. things from what i've noticed you know and what speaker stands are you using these are the ones that came with the pmc so it's okay. whatever pmc there's there's sand in the bottom of them i believe so they're pretty they're pretty pretty rugged yeah pretty stout they're um again i don't know how they would compare to like what is the 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 famous one the acoustic the anchor the, the anchor studio acoustic, what yeah. are the anchor something yeah but these are, <laughs> these are the ones that pmc sent yeah. with the speakers right so yeah i'm sure they're great and um yeah, just for they fit perfectly. So right, like, right. Yeah, yeah you got to go with those. Yeah, so. Well, sweet man, thanks yeah. for sharing the studio, and I hope you guys have learned something about a mastering quality acoustic treatment installation. Yeah. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, thanks so much for this impromptu tour. I actually used my iPhone, um, which I used to film these videos as well. Uh, but so there was a little bit of grainy stuff because it was not the best lighting. But I hope you learned a lot from this interview with Duncan Ferguson. So I would highly recommend hiring Duncan as a mastering engineer. He's an awesome dude. He's great to work with uh, and knows what he's talking about, knows what he's doing, as I'm sure you saw from this video. Um, you can hire him at thevoltageexchange.com or reach out to him to learn more about his services. Again, that's thevoltageexchange.com. I'll have a link in the notes below here. And again, if you are trying to design your own studio, then I highly recommend using my free acoustic treatment guide. And that is available at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. Link also in the description below here. If you're listening on our podcast, it'll also be in the description on the podcast. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this different video from me. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I try to answer as many as I can. And I wish you the best of luck on your journey of building and designing your own home recording studio.